Hello, and welcome to Dear Celestron. I'm Lance Lucero, Product Manager of Astronomy for Celestron, and I'm here to answer your questions. We've been getting a lot of submissions on how to view Comet F3 NEOWISE, and I'd like to share some pointers and tips on how to see it and how to find it. First, let's talk about how to find this comet. There are a lot of good resources on the web where you can go and download finder charts for the comet, uh, but they only show you where the comet is located at a specific time uh, on any given day. Um, so they can be a little difficult to use if you're not observing at that particular moment. However, uh, we do have an option for you uh, whereby you can go out and download Celestron Sky Portal app. Uh, it's available for iOS and Android, uh, either on uh, Google Play or um, the App Store. And it's a full planetarium uh, app. Um, it is a little bit large, so I would highly recommend that you download this at home over Wi-Fi instead of trying to, to do it uh, over a data plan out in the field. But once you have it installed, uh, it will actually help you find the comet. When you first start the app, you're going to see a map displayed like this. What you want to do is go down here in the corner and click search. It'll give you a list of targets that you might want to look for. And uh, what, I, what you do is you scroll down until you see brightest comets. Click on that, and now you've got a list of comets from the brightest to the faintest that are visible during this particular day that you happen to be observing. Uh, they are listed, again, from brightest to, to uh, faintest, and you can tell by looking at that first data point right there, which talks about magnitude. Magnitude is basically a scale of brightness. And uh, what you find is that, uh, unlike you would normally think, um, the brighter the comet, the lower the number. So it, the closer it is to zero, the brighter the comet is. So you'll notice that they're listed from uh, relatively uh, low magnitudes to higher magnitudes down below. Some of these are grayed out, and that is because they are simply not above your horizon at this time, but they will be uh, as the uh, the Earth rotates. Uh, as they come into your sky, uh, those will light up and be selectable as well. But the key thing to remember about the magnitude brightness is that generally speaking, anything lower than magnitude 6, anywhere between 0 and 6, uh, is going to be something that you would be able to see with the naked eye assuming that you have dark skies. So once you have your list of comets, simply select the top one, which is the brightest one. Uh, we're talking about uh, Neowise today. You click on that, and uh, this screen may depend on what your, what your previous settings have been, but there is a toggle switch right here, which will either show you the description or it'll show you the detailed object information. So just simply hit that until you get this list. And the critical thing that you want to look for here is this section right here called Celestial Coordinates. This lists the azimuth and the altitude of the comet for this specific time. So no matter what time you use the app, this will automatically update to exactly where in the sky it is located. Azimuth is basically um, a compass heading. So zero would be north, uh, true north, not magnetic north. And uh, 90 degrees to that would be east, uh, and then it circles back around clockwise, uh, where due south is 180 degrees, due west is 270 degrees. So basically, you just want to say, aim yourself to look towards that compass heading. The second number that you need to know is the altitude. This is the distance above the horizon at that particular azimuth uh, that you will locate the comet. So basically, you're looking for what direction you want to face and then how high to look for it. Now, those numbers don't really mean much uh, when you're looking at uh, a distance. So I want to explain to you how you can figure out what is 5 degrees, 10 degrees, and so on, so that you can figure out where to start looking for the comet. And uh, there is a simple trick that we used to use uh, back in the days of star hopping before go-to telescopes. And uh, that is basically using your hand. Uh, hold your arm out uh, so that your hand is at arm's length away from your body. Um, if you measure your pinky, this is approximately one degree of arc. If you use three fingers like this, this distance is roughly about five degrees of arc. 
if you use your fist with your thumb tucked in, that is roughly about 10 degrees of arc. If you spread your pinky and pointer finger, this represents at arm's length about 15 degrees. And if you use your thumb and pinky from tip to tip, you're looking at about 25 degrees. And this holds true for pretty much anybody. I know everybody's a little bit different in uh, finger size and, and, uh, and uh, arm length, uh, but it is an actual good rule of thumb or fingers, as it were. Um, and uh, this will be able to tell you. So if you look at your altitude number and it says it's 20 degrees, you know it, if you use your hand at arm's length like this and you put your pinky at the horizon, you know that the comet will be below the tip of your thumb. So that makes a really quick and easy eyeball way of knowing where to point your telescope or binoculars to locate the comet at that specific moment. Now, if you observe from a dark sky, uh, you may be able to see the comet with the naked eye. But for those of us who are living in the suburbs uh, that have bright sky glow around us, uh, you're going to want some optical help, and that is where binoculars come into play. Uh, basically, binoculars, telescopes, monoculars, any optical uh, instrument that you can get a hold of that uh, basically just increases how much light you're getting into your eye is only going to help. It doesn't have to be a fancy pair of astronomical binoculars or a giant telescope. Something as simple as a small pair of binoculars that you have for birding or watching sporting events, anything like that, um, is perfect for cometary viewing. Uh, the reason for this is because of the field of view. Comets are large objects. They're not very small, and so they don't necessarily need high magnification. Um, in fact, to best frame a comet like this, you want low magnification and a wide field of view. A, it'll help you find it easier, and B, it's going to look more amazing when you see that tail in contrast to the rest of the field of stars or sky behind it. So anything from a small 8 by 25 binocular all the way up to something like our, uh, you know, 12 by 70s, uh, you, you can use any of this and it'll help enhance that object and make it extremely bright and easily visible to you, uh, even from the heart of the city. Um, so when you are looking for the comet, again, you take your binoculars, you face yourself in the azimuth direction. Uh, that was pointed out by the app or by the star map that you have. Um, you basically want to use your hand and thumb to try to figure out how high you should start. Then, holding your binoculars up, kind of pan back and forth slowly over the area uh, in the direction that you were looking. And once you reach the end of one pass, either raise and go back the other direction, and you want to try to keep how much you raise down to one field of view of your binocular. And of course, that will change depending on the binocular and the magnification that you're using. But you want to go one field degree, one field of view up, and then pan over one field degree up and pan back over. And uh, that will help you locate it uh, pretty quickly. Um, also, remember, you may have to go down. So if you don't find it after a couple of sweeps going up, repeat the pattern, kind of S back and forth downward. And uh, again, you should be able to find it quite easily in this. Um, remember, a comet, uh, the tail is going to stand out only if the sky is dark enough. So wait until at least an hour after sunset uh, to get yourself started, and it should be very easy to find. Um, some binoculars that we were using the other night to see it, we've got another couple of uh, roof prism binoculars. Um, the question is also often asked is about, well, what's best hand hold binoculars or use a tripod. Um, when you hand hold binoculars, you generally want to use them if they are lower power. Uh, say for example, a seven or eight power binocular is fairly easy to hand hold uh, steadily and you'll get a good, good uh, view. When you start getting up to about 10 times magnification, um, just every little jitter in your hands or body can cause a little vibration and uh, starts to get really difficult to see. When you're talking about like a 12 by 70, these are giant binoculars. They are they actually are quite nose heavy. So you to balance them, you have to hold them, you know, pretty far up, um, not making it very easy to focus. In a case like this, I strongly urge you to get 
a tripod adapter and mount it to a photo tripod. Um, another good reason for this is if you observe with the family, with kids, and you, uh, this is something that you want to share with other people, having a binocular mount to hold them and then sliding these in not only makes finding it easier because you're definitely taking straight strokes. When you finally locate the object, you can leave it alone. People can walk up to the binocular and peek through it and see the comet without necessarily having to search for it. Uh, searching for a comet is a little bit difficult for youngsters. Uh, and so if you have youngsters and that's what you want to do, I highly recommend that you tripod mount. Telescopes are also okay to use. Um, don't get me wrong. Uh, you can use something like this. Uh, this is in my uh, Onyx 80. This is my 80 millimeter refractor. Uh, this actually was giving fantastic views. Um, it's got a nice three degree field of view with the eyepiece that I was using. So uh, it, does, uh, it does actually cover the comet in quite a bit of sky. Um, higher power telescopes, you're going to wind up uh, being able to collect more light. You'll see a little bit more detail in the tail. However, your field of view shrinks dramatically with the larger telescopes. So what you're going to wind up with is uh, a nice view of the coma, uh, the head with the, the little fuzz around it, uh, or detail within the tail. But it's going to be very hard to see the comet as the full streak. You're only going to be looking at a small section of it at a time. Um, but again, the takeaway here is use whatever optics you have. Any advantage that you can get to getting a larger aperture uh, amount of light going into your eyeball, you are going to see a wealth of detail that would be otherwise invisible to you or maybe not even see depending on the sky glow of your city. Remember that these tips are not just to be used for Comet Neowise, but any comets that come up in the future that are bright enough to be seen from the city. Stay tuned to Celestron social media. Uh, if any new comments do crop up, uh, we will immediately put the posts out there for you to let you guys know uh, again what and where to look. Um, if you have any further questions for Celestron, please uh, feel free to reach us through our Instagram uh, using hashtag uh, Dear Celestron. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Clear skies. Good luck.